In front of a crowd of journalists, cameras and team personnel, the Gen 3 Formula E car flaunted the Monaco Yacht Club's dress code and disrobed on stage, leaving absolutely nothing to the imagination. From the top down, it resembles a dart, harkening back to the days when the Brabham BT52 reigned supreme in Formula 1. It's deceptively simple, stitching its new mod cons into a fighter jet inspired design, according to Formula E's PR team at least, that once again turns away from a normal single seater aesthetic. As Formula E's fans have become so accustomed to the Gen 2 machine, the departure and design terms might take some getting used to. There's more than just the visuals to consider. Formula E is incredibly proud of its new car, and when you look at its accompanying fact sheet, it might be with very good reason. The big ticket items lie in both the front and the rear, as the Gen 3 car features electric motors at both axles. At the back, the car is powered by a 350kW drive motor. That's 470 brake horsepower. Formula E estimates that the car can yield speeds of up to 200 miles an hour, although the speedometers are unlikely to ever reach that over the course of the event. The seven manufacturers participating in the championship for the start of the new rule cycle have the responsibility of producing that motor. That's Jaguar, Porsche, Nissan, Mahindra, Neo 333, DS and Maserati. At the front, Formula E has introduced a standard 250kW motor that only features for regenerative purposes. That's 600 kilowatts of regen potential that the drivers can tap into, using the time-tested method of lifting off the throttle, letting the motors suck up the kinetic energy from the wheels, and stuffing it back into the battery. Even with that additional motor, the Gen 3 car is 60 kilograms lighter than its predecessor. Part of that has been down to cutting down on battery size, as the regeneration is so much more powerful that lugging around extra cells becomes superfluous. It's estimated that 40% of the energy used in the races will come from regenerated energy, up from around 25% for the Gen 2 car. The car's weight is also helped by the complete removal of the rear brakes, meaning drivers will solely rely on the stopping power from the motor regeneration at the back. That should eliminate the need for the drivers to have to pull a paddle before a corner to do that, since it should be covered in the software maps automatically. The revised aerodynamics now do away with the wheel covers used in Gen 2, and in their place comes a slightly more complex front wing, at least by Formula E standards. There's no conventional rear wing, less so than the old car even, with two tail fins instead filling the space. Regardless, the car has, according to development driver Benoit Trelloyer, more downforce than the previous car. At the launch, he described his initial feelings behind the wheel of the Gen 3 machinery, feeling, it will be much easier for teams to manage the brakes because it will be nearly full electric and you'll have many tools to really adjust the brake to how you want it to be, which is much easier than with mechanical brakes. Beyond the actual technical specifications of the Gen 3 car, Formula E has had to blend its performance targets with those of sustainability. In that, a fair chunk of the new Formula E car is recyclable, although whether the car will fit into the correct recycling bin is another matter entirely. New tyre supplier Hankook, which took over the supply tender from Michelin, will use natural rubber and recycled fibres in its tyres, and Formula E has promised that they will be fully recycled after each race. Hankook has also retained the all-weather format of tyre that Michelin was contracted to supply across Gen 1 and Gen 2, so the same compound will be bolted on come rain or shine. Beyond that, the new batteries supplied by Williams Advanced Engineering have been developed to the fashionable motto of life cycle engineering, which in essence means that the materials used have been selected to have some degree of post-life reusability. And then there's the bodywork. Given Formula E is largely a contact sport, debris and broken car and fibre is a common byproduct of the close wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing seen on the city streets. For the Gen 3 bodywork, the composite layups now feature alternative fibres such as linen, and repurpose bits of old Gen 2 waste bodywork, cutting the overall emissions involved in producing car parts. And in the considerably likely event that more debris is shed, that can be recycled too. It's a continuous recycle, apparently. Chief Engineer Alessandra Ciliberti explained that it was imperative that the car was not made too heavy with the sustainability targets, but that the Gen 3 package could yield a considerable upswing in general eco-friendliness. As she told us at the launch, we're trying our best in meeting Formula E's requests, while still keeping in mind the technical target. The monocoque is much safer today, but smaller. The battery is outputting and retaining a lot more power, but being smaller and lighter. And thanks to that, the wheelbase is shorter and the car is more agile overall. And that's really the best we could expect. So where does Gen 3 stand in the family tree of Formula E cars? The Gen 1 car was largely a means to get the series off the ground, borrowing styling cues from numerous pre-established racing categories. The current Gen 2 car moved that on, hiking up the power and creating an entirely new face for the championship with its own unique visage. Gen 3, it seems, has moved that on even further, giving Formula E more bang for its buck and pushing its credentials on both the performance and sustainability fronts. For now, nine more races remain in Gen 2's tenure before the cars are put out to pasture at the end of the season after four years of service. 
After that, one only hopes that the Gen 3 car can deliver on the excitement it promises. 